on behalf of the Kabangan family and the ALC Media Group, we give thanks to the Lord for allowing us to continue the story started 30 years ago by my father, the late ambassador and chairman emeritus of the ALC Group of Companies, Antonio L. Cabanguchua. It is the story of how a small magazine got built on the strength of an incomparable friendship between a man of business and a man of words. This is the story of how they both cherished literature and vowed to nurture excellent literary works in the pages of the magazine. Through the best of times and the worst of times, we continue this story. This is the story of the Philippines graphic.
The Governance Commission for Government-Owned or Controlled Corporations was created under the GOCC Governance Act of 2011 as the Oversight Body for Government-Owned or Controlled Corporations or GOCCs. The GCG plays a pivotal role in transforming GOCCs into tools for economic progress and development. It is mandated to actively exercise the state's ownership rights and ensure that the operations of GOCCs are transparent and responsive to the needs of the public. In line with this, it is the GCG's role to be stewards of the 118 GOCCs under RA No. 10149. We must vigilantly monitor and evaluate GOCC performance, rationalize the GOCC sector through streamlining, reorganization, merger and upon evaluation, recommend the President of the Philippines the privatization or abolition of GOCCs, and shortlist candidates for appointment to the boards of directors based on the fit and proper rule, and set standards for compensation, incentives, and benefits. The Governance Commission's medium-term strategy under this administration is an anti-corruption and integrity program. As stewards of the sector, we aim to safeguard its 10 trillion pesos in total assets and prevent the dissipation and wastage of public funds arising from corruption. The GCG moves forward to become a mature, resilient, and future-ready organization. GCG Chairperson Retired Justice Alex L. Kiraz outlines the Governance Commission's mantra for the GOCCs under its scope aim great. G stands for good governance wherein governance culture is enriched, and best practices are championed in the GOCC sector. R is for right-sizing wherein stakeholder concerns are appropriately addressed by the GOCCs, and redundant positions are examined to avoid unnecessary expenses on the government's part. E for efficiency where GOCCs are encouraged to provide better service. A for accountability for all GOCCs to monitor and safeguard each corporation's assets through the anti-corruption and integrity program. Lastly, T is for transparency wherein a digitalized integrated corporate reporting system is utilized for the easy analysis of the financial state, viability, and fiscal discipline of all GOCCs to gain public trust. For over a decade now, the GCG has been instrumental in ensuring that our GOCCs function and operate efficiently while also achieving the purpose that they were meant to serve. As you look back on the successes that have been achieved over the years, allow me to leave you each with a challenge. Take this time to understand and appreciate once again the significance of your mandate and of your office. Let the gravity of your contribution to our society's development push you to be twice as passionate and diligent in fulfilling your duties. And most importantly, allow genuine compassion for our fellow Filipinos to be your driving force in pursuing your advocacies and your program. With hopeful anticipation, let us continue to work together, utilizing our assets and our resources to build a more sustainable and inclusive future for our children. Congratulations, and may you have a meaningful celebration. Sir? Ang tagal na ng ubo mo ah. Nagpa-check ka na sir? Baka kung ano na yan. Oo nga eh. Sige, pa-check up ako mamaya. <coughs> Kailangan natin ma-check kung bakit kanya ng ubo mo. Nakita ko rin na medyo mataas ang sugar level mo. Nagpa-register ka na ba sa PhilHealth Consulta? PhilHealth Consulta? Ano po yun? May bagong programa ang PhilHealth. Ang PhilHealth Consulta. Binepisyo ito na covered na ang checkup, laboratory at ibang piling gamot ng lahat ng PhilHealth members. May pickers dito sa ospital. Pwede silang tumulong sa iyo sa pag-register at magbigay ng detalye. Sige po, Doc. Magpapa-register po ako. Magandang araw po. Mag-inquire po ako tungkol sa PhilHealth Consulta. Paano po ba yun? 
Pwede mo ba akong tulungan mong register? Opo, sir. May PhilHealth konsulta na. Layunin ng PhilHealth na matulungan ang bawat isa na makaiwas o maagapan ng pagkakaroon ng malubang sakit. Pwedeng ma-avail sa package na ito ang konsultasyon, health risk screening at assessment, mga piling laboratory at diagnostic test, mga piling gamot at medisina. Paano mag-avail nito? Kailangan mo munang magparehistro sa isang accredited consulta provider o facility. May dalawang paraan para magparehistro. Una, sa pamamagitan ng self-registration sa PhilHealth Member Portal. Sundan lang ang mga hakbang na ito. Step 1. I-update ang inyong member data record o MDR sa pamamagitan ng pag-fill out ng PhilHealth Member Registration Form o PMRF. Step 2. Mag-login sa member portal o member online registration na makikita sa PhilHealth website. Makikita sa inyong mga screens ang link ng official website ng PhilHealth. Step 3. Pumili ng consulta provider at i-click ang Yes. Step 4. I-screenshot o i-print ang confirmation message. Ito ang magsisilbing patunay na ikaw ay nakarehistro na sa PhilHealth Consulta Facility. Ang isa pang paraan para makapag-register sa consulta provider ay sa pamamagitan ng assisted registration. Pumunta sa alinmang PhilHealth Authorized Third Party Agencies. Current Employer. Social Worker ng PhilHealth Consulta Provider. Local Government Unit o LGU Office for Senior Citizens Affairs o OSCA PhilHealth Local Health Insurance Office o LIO o alinmang tanggapan ng PhilHealth PhilHealth Customer Assistance Relations and Empowerment Staff o PCARES na nakatalaga sa consulta facility PhilHealth Action Center Hotline Kung nais mong magparehistro sa pamamagitan ng assisted registration, kailangan mong magpasa ng PhilHealth Consulta Registration Form o PKRF sa inyong napiling third-party agency. Siguraduhin kumpleto ang impormasyong inilagay sa form bago ito ipasa. Matapos sa submit ang form, makakatanggap ka ng confirmation receipt na may QR code na maaari ninyong picturean gamit ang phone camera. Ngayon, kung kayo ay registrado na at nais mong i-avail ang benefit package, kinakailangan mong kumuha ng authorization transaction code o ATC alinman sa mga sumusunod. PhilHealth Website Kahit sa ang PhilHealth Local Health Insurance Office o LIO, PCARES, PhilHealth Action Center Hotline. Kapag nakakuha ka na ng ATC, ipresenta mo lamang ito sa consulta provider para ma-avail ang benefit package. Aba, okay to ah. Sige po, magpaparehistro ako. Nawala na ang ubo ko. Naaagapan na rin na maging diabetic ako. Salamat sa PhilHealth Consulta. Naaagapan ang paglala ng sakit ko. Kaya magparehistro na rin kayo. Para sakit ay maiwasan, magpakonsulta ka na. Magpakonsulta ka na. Magpakonsulta ka na. Alam niyo ba na sa inalim ng Universal Healthcare Law, mapoprotektahan na ang kalusugan ng bawat Filipino sa pinakabagong benepisyong handog ng PhilHealth? Ito ang pinalawak na Primary Care Benefit Package. Ang konsultasyong sulit at tama o ang PhilHealth Consulta Benefit Package. Nilalayo ng konsulta na matulungan ng bawat isa na makaiwas o maagapan ng sakit. Makakanta ng benepisyong ito mula sa mga consulta providers na nagpapa-accredit sa PhilHealth. Narito ang mga serbisyong maaaring ma-avail sa package na ito. Number 1. Konsultasyon Number 2. Health Risk Screening at Assessment Number 3. Piling Laboratory at Imaging Tests At number 4, mga piling gamot at medisina, ayon sa health risks, edad, at pangangailangan ng pasyente. Paano ang pag-avail ng PhilHealth Consulta Benefit Package? Madali lamang. 
Una, magparehistro sa napiling accredited PhilHealth Consulta Provider sa inyong lugar. Pwedeng irehistro ang sarili o self-registration sa pamamagitan ng pag-login sa member portal sa PhilHealth website. O di kaya'y piliin ang assisted registration o humingi ng assistance sa pagpaparehistro mula sa mga sumusunod. A. Iyong employer B. Social worker ng PhilHealth Consulta Provider kung mayroon C. Local Government Unit D. Office of Senior Citizen Affairs o OSCA E. PhilHealth Local Health Insurance Office o alinmang PhilHealth Office F. PhilHealth Customer Assistance, Relations and Empowerment Staff o PCARES na nakatalaga sa Consulta Facility o G. PhilHealth Corporate Action Center Hotline Kapag rehistrado na, maaari nang kumuha ng Authorization Transaction Code o ATC, isang system-generated unique code sa mga sumusunod. A. PhilHealth Website B. PhilHealth Local Health Insurance Office C. PhilHealth Customer Assistance Relations and Empowerment Staff o PCARES na nakatalaga sa mga ospital D. PhilHealth Corporate Action Center Kapag mayroon ng ATC, ibigay ito sa inyong consulta provider para maka-avail ng benepisyo. Kung ang miyembro ay walang kakayahang kumuha ng ATC, maaari namang dumiretsyo sa consulta facility at magbigay ng pahintulot o consent para makuna ng litrato o digital image. I-encode ng consulta facility ang detalye ng miyembro sa electronic reporting system at i-generate ang electronic consulta availment slip o ECAS at electronic prescription slip o ePress. I-accomplish at lagdaan naman ang electronic consulta availment slip o prescription slip na ibibigay sa inyo ng inyong consulta provider. At iinangang nasimula ng hakbang tungo sa mas mabuting kalusugan. Maari na kumonsulta at mag-avail ng mga serbisyo, laboratorio at piling gamot batay sa payo ng iyong doktor. Ngayon, higit kailanman, mahalagang manatiling malusog at maiwasan ng karamdaman para sa iyong sarili, sa iyong pamilya at para sa pamayanan. Konsultasyong sulit at tama o PhilHealth Consulta. Para sa kit ay maiwasan, magpakonsulta ka na. Magpakonsulta ka na. Magpakonsulta ka na. S.I.S. Touch na!
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our second webinar on the Governance Commission for GOCCs, or better known as the GCG. I'm your host, Jasper Manuel Y. Arcalas, and together with me is my co-host, Trixie Leigh Bonota. Good morning, Kuya Jasper. Good morning, everyone. Before I proceed, I'd like to congratulate you, Kuya Jasper. You were recently inducted to the Hall of Fame of the Binhi Awards. Grabe po. Hall of Famer yung katabi ko. Congratulations again, Kuya. Salamat, salamat. So, going forward, in this second GCG webinar, our viewers will get a first-hand glimpse of the GCG in action. O nga, Trixie. This webinar, we hope to deepen our understanding kung ano nga ba ang GCG at kung paano ito nakaka-apekto sa buhay ng sambayan ng Pilipino. Ayan, yes. This will be an exciting webinar kasi it puts in focus the inner workings of four government institutions na kumbaga ay madalas na nasa sentro ng atensyon ng publiko. These institutions include the Social Security System or SSS, the Government Service and Insurance System or GSIS, the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth, and the Philippine Crop Insurance Corporation or PCIC. And in this webinar, we will also highlight the role of the GCG in ensuring na itong apat na GOCs na ito ay talagang tumutupad sa kanilang mga sinumpaang mandato at tungkulin sa mamamayang Pilipino. Pero bago ang lahat, here to deliver his welcome remarks to our speakers is Mr. T. Anthony C. Cabangon, the publisher of the Philippines Graphic and the Business Mirror. Sa lahat ng nanonood sa atin ngayon, with the advent of social media, through the power of the internet, publications like the Philippines Graphic and the Business Mirror have geometrically increased their capacity to reach out to more and more readers and now even viewers. Gone are the days when publications have to rely only on the reach of their printed copies to gain an audience. And because of this social media advantage, our readers and viewers through the webinar can now openly engage government officials. We can engage government officials in such a way na harap-harapang maidudulog ng mga tao ang kanilang mga tanong in this very public venue, which is what a webinar can do. For their part, our government speakers can ventilate and articulate their positions in open and direct public discussions. Wala nang harang or filters na tinatawag para maparating nila sa tao kung ano talaga ang mga nagagawa nila in the name of public service. We bring you the heads of the SSS, GSIS, PhilHealth, and the Philippine Crop Insurance Corporation. More importantly, we let the public know that for any and all concerns regarding this for government agencies, they can go to the GCG to see to it that their concerns are translated into action. In behalf of our host, we welcome our readers and viewers to this very timely webinar. We thank our gracious guests and our speakers, allowing the public to know firsthand just where they are ter in terms of the people's interests and concerns. We welcome to the second GCG webinar, GCG in Action, Unlocking GCD Potential for Positive Change. Thank you, Sir Anton. And may, remi may we remind our viewers na may pag-giveaway po tayo mamaya sa webinar na ito. Our prizes will go to viewers who register their remarks or comments to this webinar on our graphic Facebook page. And without further ado, uh, let's go to, the, to our first speaker for this webinar. He is the Chairman of the Governance Commission for GOCCs, Retired Justice Alex L. Quiroz. Chairman Quiroz became, became a law practitioner in 1984. He first worked as a special counsel to the Office of the City Fiscal of Manila from 1985 to 1987. From 1987 to 1988, he served as a legis legislative staff to the House of Representatives, later becoming solicitor at the Office of the Solicitor General from 1988 to 1992. He later became Metropolitan Trial Court Judge in Pasig City from 1992 to 2001. 
becoming regional trial court judge from 2001 to 2008 at the Special Hinius Court of the Pasig City. For the next 14 years, from 2008 to 2022, he served as Associate Justice of the Sandigan Bayan. And upon retirement, he was appointed as Chairman of the GCG. Ladies and gentlemen, GCG Chair, Retired Justice Alex L. Quiroz. Hello, uh, a pleasant good morning to everybody. On behalf of the Governance Commission for GOCC, we would like to thank Philippine Graphics for inviting once again the GCG and the GOCC partners that will present their social services and programs. Joining us today are SSS President and CEO Mr. Rolando Makasait, JSIS President and General Manager Arnulfo Wick Veloso, PhilHealth President and CEO Emmanuel Mandi Desma Jr., and PCIC Acting Head and CEO Joey Bernabe. I would like to also recognize the presence of uh, Commissioner Attorney Gijon Mortel from GCG, while uh, Commissioner Attorney uh, Gigi Berberabe is attending to an equally important uh, event. This is uh, a welcome initiative to help us in disseminating information about who we are, what we do, and what we are plans in relation to our mandate. Thank you very much and welcome. Thank you, Chairman Quiroz, for that very enlightening eye-opener on the GCG. Our second speaker is GCG Commissioner Gideon D.V. Mortel. Commissioner Mortel took his Bachelor of Arts in Political Science degree at the University of the Philippines and earned his law degree in San Sebastian College. He completed his Master of Laws degree at the Pamantasan ng Nungsod ng Maynila, pursuing his doctorate degree in law at the University of Santo Tomas, where he graduated magna cum laude. He took further studies abroad in public policy and administrative reform. Commissioner Mortel's first government job was serving as administrative officer at the Department of Foreign Affairs. After finishing law, he continued working in the legislative department during the time of Senate President Manny Villar. He went back to the executive department and worked as senior executive fellow in the Development Academy of the Philippines. He was later appointed as committee secretary of the consultative committee tasked to draft the federal constitution during the administration of former President Rodrigo Duterte. He also worked in the Development Academy of the Philippines before becoming GCG Commissioner. Ladies and gentlemen, Commissioner Gideon D.V. Mortel. Magandang umaga po sa lahat at uh, marami pong salamat sa Philippine Graphic for inviting uh, all of us today. Yung pong ating apat na kasamang mga GOCCs are from our uh, social services and financial sectors at uh, sigurado pong tayo mabibigyan ng magandang mga uh, mensahe at informasyon ngayong araw na ito. Akin din pong uh, uh, binabati ang ating chairman, Chairman Alex Quiroz of GCG and also uh, the other uh, guest, the uh, uh, head of the uh, four GOCCs. Uh, ngunit hindi ko po sila nakikita dito ang uh, SSS President and CEO na si uh, Mr. Rolly Makasaet, ang ating pong GSIS President and General Manager Arnulfo Wick Veloso, ang ating pong PhilHealth President and CEO Emmanuel Mandi Arledesma, and ang ating pong PCIC uh, CEO Joey Bernabe. Magandang umaga din po sa inyo at siguro po ay yung nakikita ko po dito ay mga representatives po nila. Okay, we cannot thank you enough for uh, actively promoting uh, GCG and let the public know who we are, what we are, and what our plans in relation to our mandate. Okay, ito po ay siguradong uh, isa't kalahating oras hanggang dalawang oras na magandang talakayan sa mga serbisyo ang pwedeng ibigay ng aming maapat na GOCCs under our coverage. Magandang maga po muli. Maraming maraming salamat, Commissioner Mortel. Unfortunately, our next speaker, GCG Commissioner Gigi Berberabe Martinez, could not join us today due to a conflict with her schedule. Nonetheless, she sends her regards to 
everyone. Kaya napansin natin Trixie no, sa parehong opening remarks ni Justice Quiroz at ni Attorney Mortel na napakahalaga ng uh, role o gampanin ng GCG sa ating bansa. O nga Kuya Jasper, imagine yung GCG, siya yung oversight body ng lahat ng 118 GOCCs na nag exist dito sa bansa natin ngayon. Grabe, ang dami no. And because all of these GOCCs are tasked to generate revenue for the government, the GCG is, is in effect also overseeing millions of pesos of the Filipinos money. Ayan, kaya mahalaga talaga na nai-ensure nila na yung mga GOCCs ginagawa nila yung mga jobs nila correctly and really serve the needs of the Filipinos. Ayan. We'll have a short intermission and we, when we come back, we will go to our discussion with the inner workings of the SSS, GSIS, PhilHealth, and the PCIC. Ayan. So bago po yung start na yon, just a reminder sa mga viewers natin that we will have a giveaway later on. So the Philippines Graphic will give away three overnight stays in a premier room in Taal Vista Hotel with breakfast buffet for two at Veranda. Kaya sa mga viewers natin na nagbibigay ng remarks nila sa webinar na ito, uh, watch out for the hashtag later on. So pwede din po kayong mag-send ng questions nyo mamaya. Okay, with that, alam mo ba, Trixie, na ang SSS ay mayroong 41 million members as of the end of June of this year? Grabe, ganyan po karami ang sineservisyuhan ng SSS. And that is why it has a reserve fund of some 700 billion pesos. Our next speaker who would speak on behalf of the SSS is the current Vice President of NCR North Division of the State Pension Fund. He was the former acting head of Public, Af Public Affairs and Special Events Division. He was also former Department Manager of Media Affairs Department and former Department Manager of the Education Department of the SSS. Let's all welcome Vice President Fernando F. Nicolas. Mabuting araw po sa ating lahat. Mabuting araw, Justice Quiroz, uh, Commissioner Mortel, kay Mr. Kabangon, at sa aking mga kasama sa government service, sa public service, isang mabuting araw po sa inyong lahat. I'm Fernando Nicolas, Vice President for the NCR North Division, and I'll be speaking on behalf of our President and Chief Executive Officer, Rolando Ledesma Makasaet. SSS is one of the pioneer government organizations that has embraced digitization in its operation, making it one of the organizations at the forefront of the technological shift since the 1990s. SSS has utilized information technology to ensure seamless service delivery to its members worldwide. This has been achieved through the establishment of the website www.sss.gov.ph and the mobile app which serve as the platform for accessing accessible uh, transaction from for SSS information and services. Member can utilize the my.ss account accessible both through the website and the mobile app to submit their different benefit applications such as sickness, maternity, disability, unemployment, retirement, funeral, and death. Getting information about SSS has been made easier. Aside from the website, we have also the mobile app we have also the text SSS, just register and send to 2600. We have also the soft service express terminals, which are available at the e-centers in our branches. We have, you can also call us through our hotline 1455 and call center 7917-7777. Through the USAP Tayo, the Customer Relationship Management System or CRMS, member can log in, can, can uh, log their complaints and queries on various transactions about SSS. We have also our social media sites. We are present in the Facebook, the IG, uh, the, the YouTube, the Twitter, uh, and our latest addition is our TikTok channel. To alleviate the financial burden faced by the members and employers, we are currently implementing condonation programs. For the employers, we have the condonation uh, of contribution penalty and delinquency management uh, program and for the household employers, we have the contribution penalty condonation and restructuring programs. These programs are for all single proprietorships, corporations, partnerships, cooperatives, associations, and household employers who are delinquent in the payment of SSS contributions, whose financial positions demonstrate 
a clear inability to pay the assessed delinquency arising from the economic crisis, financial reverses, or resulting from pandemic, natural, calamity, or man-made disaster without fault on the part of the employer. We encourage our delinquent employers to apply for these programs to get, to get back to their standing with the SSS and so we can mutually give the social benefits due to our employers. SSS recognizes not, that not everyone has the time to go to the branches, so we, we are bringing our services closer to them instead. One of these is eWheels, a mobile service program that aims to provide ease and convenience to our members and general public by visiting barangays, schools, public libraries, religious and non-religious organizations. With our tagline, Masayang Tumulong Servisyong Ramdam, the eWheels is equipped with laptops and internet connection to assist our members in their inquiries and in navigating our digital platforms. Another program is the Barangay E-Center. We empower our partner LGU to assist our members in accessing their accounts online. The LGU provides a dedicated desktop or laptop which our members can use for various SSS transactions. We give trainings to our partner LGUs on how to navigate our online system so that they can assist and lead our members throughout their online journey. We have also our Kasanga Collect program that offers a convenient mode of remittance through salary deduction scheme in paying SSS contribution. We enter into a partnership with different local government units and organizations so job order and contractual, contractual workers will be classified as self-employed SSS members and will be able to qualify for the benefit and loan programs of the SSS. As we approach our 66th year this coming September, what members can expect from SSS is that we will continue to further improve its core and support processes and provide more meaningful benefits. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, SSS Vice President of North Division, Fernand Nicolás. Salamat po ulit. Dito naman tayo ngayon sa isang ahensya that has over 2.5 million members and pensioners. Madami din pala. Dami, dami. dami. Yeah. So this is the Government Service Insurance System or GSIS. Our next speaker is a graduate of BS Accountancy from the Ateneo de Zamboanga University in 1997 and passed the CPA licensure examinations in October of the same year. He graduated from Western Mindanao State University with Bachelor of Laws in 2005 and passed the bar exam in the same year. Attorney Jason C. Tang started his professional career as an auditor of Sisip Gores Belayo and Company, or SGV. Attorney Tang proceeded to be a full-time instructor in the Department of Accountancy of Ateneo de Zamboanga University and part-time CPA reviewer for the university CPA Review School. He joined this GSIS as Accountant 2 in 2000 and rose from the ranks over the last 23 years. Currently, he is the Acting Executive Vice President for Core Business Sector, which covers the operations for social insurance and general insurance. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome GSIS AEVP for Core Business Sector, Attorney Jason C. Teng. Isang maginawang umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, I would like to thank... Uh, First and foremost, Philippines Graphic, ang uh, ating uh, mga uh, host po, Sir Jasper, Ma'am Trixie. And of course, I'd like to thank the GCG. Uh, thank, mal, uh, isang malaking thank you po kay Chair, Chairman and Justice Alex Quiroz, kay Commissioner Attorney uh, Gideon Mortel, Commissioner and Attorney uh, Gigi uh, Berberabe Martinez. Uh, thank you so much for allowing the GSIS this opportunity uh, to be able to let its members know more about it. Sa lahat po kasi ng ginagawa ng GSIS, uh, isa lang po ang uh, overarching na commitment ng GSIS and that is to provide the ultimate customer experience for our members. So this is rooted in our goal of uh, providing what we call ginhawa for all. So, which serves as the foundation for all our initiatives. So, pagdating po sa mga loan programs namin, uh, our strategy is tailored para sumuporta po sa mga members who are experiencing financial difficulties. So, we offer loans at uh, very competitive interest rates. We have extended repayment terms, minimal service fees, and uh, loan consolidation opportunities. So this is achieved by merging multiple GSIS loans into a single loan 
and condoning penalties and surcharges if there are any. So the consolidation not only simplifies yung repayment schedule nila, but also helps them avoid missed payments uh, and the stress of managing multiple accounts. It further prevents their loans from accumulating and impacting later on their retirement and other benefits. Uh, isa po sa mga primary products po talaga namin is the MPL Plus. Uh, MPL stands for Multipurpose Loan. So this is designed to help members consolidate their loans as I stated kanina. Since its, its inception po uh, in October 2020, we have actually already granted a total of 400 billion pesos through this program. So uh, the MPL Plus offers a higher loan amount pwede pong up to 14 times the borrower's basic salary or up to five, a maximum of 5 million pesos with interest rate at 7%. It also provides a longer payment term of up to 10 years. So, ang important safety net po ng MPL Plus is that there is actually a redemption insurance which pays off the loan balance in case of the borrower's death during the term of the loan. Uh, at uh, isa pa pong gusto namin ibahagi sa mga members namin is that the application process po para sa lahat ng mga transactions sa, sa GSIS ay ginagawa na nating streamlined at convenient para sa lahat. Uh, uh, it's com the loan process is actually completely paperless already and can be done uh, via the GSIS Touch mobile application. So, if that is done, loan proceeds are credited directly to a member's e-card, making access to the funds quicker. So, isa po ito, itong mobile application po ng GSIS is one of those uh, pr products that we actively want our members to know about kasi it's the best way to contact uh, GSIS and uh, avail of its services. It's, uh, it's in your phone. It can be uh, accessed 24 by 7 wherever you are, no? And uh, pagdating naman po sa loans natin, ang important thing to remember is that uh, for our members, uh, ang MPL Plus po reinvests the income earned from the loan program back into improved member benefits and services. No? Uh, kaya the member, member loans are actually part of our investment, also for the members' well-being. Aside from granting loans, we also have the fiduciary responsibility of ma effectively managing and growing our members' funds. Our main objective is to secure a comfortable retirement for all civil servants. Kaya, uh, in line with this, we are constantly reviewing our investment policy guidelines. Uh, we are very proud here at GSIS that we, are, we always uh, are on top of the situation, especially with the changing markets. Uh, this initiative underscores our commitment to responsibly invest our members' contribution. We are not only cautious about protecting funds, but we are proactively finding and capitalizing on profitable investment opportunities. Uh, yung mga investment decisions po natin, may dual purpose po yan. Not only are we striving to increase our members' funds, but we also aim to support government's eight-point socioeconomic agenda in line with the theme of Bagong Pilipinas, affirming our role of uh, in the collective effort towards national development. Uh, it should be noted kasi that uh, our country's population is around 110 million already and uh, median age is just about 26. So we understand the vital importance of empowering our young citizens to reach their full potential. And that is why GSI aims to invest in businesses and industries that cater to the needs and aspirations of this young demographic. To achieve this, uh, we focus our in investments on key sectors that will have the most significant impact on our population's quality of life. These include power, water, food production, telecommunications, healthcare, uh, banking and financial services, as well as consumer goods. In fact, GSI is the first to invest in the world's first ever energy transition mechanism, which seeks to replace all pow uh, fired power plants with clean power to support the country's commitment to address climate change. So all our members po can rest assured that the GSIS is always doing its best to ensure a good quality of life for all of them post-retirement. That is all. Thank you. Maraming maraming salamat po, Atty. Teng. And our next speaker heads uh, uh, an official that 
from a government agency that delivers universal health insurance coverage for all Filipinos. Since the passage of the Universal Health Care Act in 2019, all Filipinos are now covered by the Philippine Health Insurance. And this totals to what about 117 million Filipinos. Ang dami, di ba, Trixie? Parang parami ng parami na cover ng mga GOCC natin. Na. Our next speaker is no stranger to the public and requires no lengthy introduction. Let's all welcome PhilHealth Acting Vice President for Corporate Affairs Group, Mr. Ray Valenia. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on behalf of our President and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Emmanuel Sarmandi Ledesma Jr., who is uh, attending to an equally important commitment today, allow us to uh, present to you the uh, National Health Insurance Program. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pag niyo po sa PhilHealth sa event na ito and for giving us this uh, opportunity to talk about the program and our role in the universal health care no? for the benefit of our kababayans here and abroad. We also would like to thank the GCG headed by Chairperson Justice Alex, Quiro, uh, Alex Quiroz for bringing together uh, GOCCs today no? uh, that provide social protection for the Filipino people. The PhilHealth will always be uh, one and in unity with the GCG in making sure that our operations are transparent and responsive to the needs of the public. Next slide, please. Ang Pilipinas po ay uh, may uh, mahigit sa limampung taon na experience no, in providing uh, uh, social health insurance uh, services to our people. And that started with the establishment of the Medicare program in the early 70s, which eventually was expanded to become the National Health Insurance Program, which is being administered by PhilHealth. And that was enacted into law in 1995. Ngayon po, I, uh, in 2019, the universal healthcare law was enacted to ensure that all Filipinos are guaranteed with equitable access to quality and affordable healthcare goods and services. And more importantly, we, each and every one is protected against financial risk. Wala pong dapat na maghirap sa pag-access natin ng mga servisyong medikal at sa pagpapagamot natin sa ating pong mga karamdaman. Section 3B of the UHC law, no? yeah, uh, sinabi yan, uh, that uh, uh, everyone will have equitable access no, to healthcare services. At dapat hindi po tayo maghihirap sa mga serbisyo na ito. The UHC law also mandated the automatic membership of all Filipinos into PhilHealth, thereby ending the decades-long uh, war for universal population coverage. Next slide, please. So what exactly does the universal healthcare law provides for each Filipino? So ito po ang ibig sabihin ng UHC at ng PhilHealth sa bawat Pilipino. Una po, uh, tayong lahat ng mga Pilipino ay automatic members na po ng National Health Insurance Program. Basta Pilipino po tayo, nasaan man tayo, nandito man sa Pilipinas o nasa iba't ibang panig ng mundo, tayo po ay members na po ng PhilHealth. And everyone is also uh, given immediate entitlement or eligibility to the benefits without the uh, necessary contribution requirements. But that doesn't mean na hindi na po tayo magbabayad ng ating contributions. Mahalaga ang pagbabayad ng contributions. Ang sinasabi lamang po ng UHC law, kapag kinailangan po natin ng servisyong medikal, kailangan nating magpagamot sa ating karamdaman, dapat ay ma-access po natin ang mga servisyong ito at kaakibat po nun, magamit po natin yung ating PhilHealth benefits. Secondly, everyone will be assigned to a primary care provider of our choice who shall be the first and continuing point of contact in the healthcare delivery system. At yan po ang uh, uh, tinutungo ng ating pong konsulta program wherein we aim to provide each and every Filipino access with primary healthcare providers. In line with that, PhilHealth will also contract with healthcare provider networks on behalf of the members. So ito po ay mas magiging mabilis at mas malawak po ang ating pagkakaloob ng primary care services na pinopondohan po ng PhilHealth. Kamakailan ay pumirma po ang PhilHealth ng service level agreements with Baguio City, Bataan, Quezon, Guimaras, South Cotabato, 
LabX and Qualimed, limang LGUs po yan at dalawang private entity para po maservisuhan ang marami nating kababayan with the consulta package. Lastly po, ang healthcare spending po ng miyembro should be predictable. At yan po'y sinimula na po natin sa ating Z-Benefits Program wherein with our contracted facilities ay dapat ay meron ng nakatakda na magiging co-payment no? yung atin pong pasyente nang sa gayon ay alam po nila kung meron pa silang babayaran at mapaghahandaan po nila ito on top of the PhilHealth coverage. No? So nagsimula yan sa Z-Benefits at ang magiging direction po natin ay dapat maging predictable na kung meron mang co-payment yung miyembro ay ito ay dapat meron ng uh, fixed rate din po. Next slide please. Ang atin pong mga kababayan ay dapat assured of the PhilHealth benefit packages in times that they need it. So ang sinasabi po natin dito kapag sila po ay na-confine, dapat ma-avail po yung mga benepisyong ito. Pangunahing kinocover po ng PhilHealth ay inpatient care packages. Ito ay kapag ka yung na-confine, na-hospitalized, na-admit yung ating miyembro sa mga accredited facilities po ng PhilHealth, saan man po yan dito sa bansa. We also cover cases that do not need confinement like chemotherapy, yung day surgeries, yung hemodialysis, at meron din po tayong mga Z packages that uh, for patients that require prolonged hospitalization and very expensive treatments. Ang tawag po natin dyan ay Z benefit packages. We also have benefits uh, in response to uh, sustainable development goals no, of uh, of uh, PhilHealth and uh, some of the packages include outpatient HIV AIDS package at yung animal bite treatment package natin. And lastly, ito po ang ating pinalalakas at ito po ay nabanggit ng ating Pangulong Bongbong Marcos sa kanyang SONA yesterday, yung ating pong PhilHealth consulta package wherein uh, ma-access na po natin ng libre yung pong consultation, yung health risk screening and assessment, Meron din pong nakapaloob dito ang tat, labing tatlong laboratory tests at 21 maintenance drugs and medicines at ang mga ito ay maaaring ipagkaloob sa pasyente kapag kakinailangan po at batay sa kanilang health risks. As of June of 2023, mahigit sa dalawang libo na po ang na-accredit nating consulta providers at yan po ay dadami pa sa tulong po ng ating mga lokal na pamahalaan at ibang partners. Next slide. With all these benefit packages, uh, paano po natin ito sinusustain? So dito naman makikita natin yung mga sources of funds no, to be able to finance our benefit packages. Una ay yung premium contributions ng atin pong mga miyembro at meron din, syempre yung syntax ay uh, part of the uh, collection from, from the syntax. Yan po ay uh, nililegislate at uh, yan po ay Uh, sinasubsidize sa atin ng national government at yan po ay nare-release atin by way of the General Appropriations Act. Ang atin pong mga partners na PAGCOR at PCSO, batay sa UHC law, si, uh, part of their funds are also being transferred to PhilHealth uh, by way also of the General Appropriations Act. So yan po ang uh, mga major sources of funds para po sa atin pong mga benefit packages. So the continuing benefit enhancement and expansion is a top priority of uh, PhilHealth. Next slide, please. And we thank the members, the national government, as well as partner agencies in providing strong support in this endeavor. Following our board-approved benefit plan, the following are lined up for this year. Next slide. Kamakailan lamang ay in-expand po ng PhilHealth, yun pong ating coverage para sa dialysis. Yan po ay nagsimula sa 90 sessions. Ngayong taon ay in-institutionalized na po ng ating PhilHealth Board yung 156 sessions. Ito po ay alinsunod sa current standard for adequate o sapat na hemodialysis para sa isang pasyente na tatlong sessions kada linggo. At kung merong 52 weeks in a year, that would uh, require... Uh, 156 sessions at lahat ng 156 sessions ay covered na po ng PhilHealth. Sa bawat session, ang kinocover po natin dyan ay 2,600 at uh, kung kikwentahin natin sa buong taon, 
ang coverage na ng PhilHealth ay aabot na po sa 405,600 pesos. Next slide. We are also rationalizing select inpatient case rates. And this year, we are initially looking at moderate and high-risk pneumonia and acute stroke, no? both ischemic and hemorrhagic, being the most common cases availed of by the patients in recent years. Hence, patients can improve uh, can expect an improvement in the extent by which PhilHealth will pay for these conditions as soon as the PhilHealth Board finally approves our proposals on these case rates. Next slide. Moreover, we will also introduce enhancements in our select Z benefit packages. Unahin ko na po yung orthopedic implants. Uh, Enhance din po yung kidney transplantation Z package, yung breast, cervical, and prostate cancers, at open heart surgeries para po sa mga bata, specifically ventricular septal defect and tetralogy of fallow. Next slide. This year, PhilHealth is also committed to introduce the following. Una, yung ating outpatient benefit package for mental health. Ayon po sa mga pag-aaral, estimated 6 na milyong mga kababayan po natin ay nabubuhay ng may depression o kaya ay anxiety na pinalala, pinalala pa po ng COVID-19 pandemic. Thus, in addition to our existing inpatient coverage for mental health conditions, we are pleased to introduce this package no, to improve health outcomes, quality of life, and productivity of our kababayans with mental health issues. Abangan po natin yan ngayong taon at mag issue po tayo ng circular to that effect. Another package due for this year is the outpatient package for severe acute malnutrition or SAM. Para yan sa mga bata na below 5 years old. Alam po natin na marami po tayong mga kababayan below 5 years old na uh, may issue po no, pagdating dito. At ito po ang suporta ng PhilHealth sa kalusugan at nutrition ng magnanay law that provides for the management of severe acute malnutrition. Next slide. While the state of public health emergency throughout the Philippines due to the COVID-19 was just recently been lifted, the COVID-19 remains to be a serious concern for certain subpopulation at nangangailangan po ito, syempre, ng continuing public health response. At sa bahagi po ng PhilHealth, ay kasama po yung pagpapabuti ng COVID-19 benefit packages natin, kasama na yung testing, kasama na yung isolation packages for rationalization this year. Also, we will continue to strengthen our consulta package at gaya nga ng aking nabanggit kanina, tuloy-tuloy ang pag accredit natin ng maraming consulta providers nang sa gayon mas maraming mga Pilipino ang mas magkaroon ng greater access to primary care services in the country. Next slide. And to further intensify the implementation of our consulta package, aktibo po ang PhilHealth sa pagsuporta sa Lab for All program ng atin pong unang ginang na sa ginang Liza Araneta Marcos. So the Lab for All aims to bring primary care services for, uh, from free consultations, laboratory services, and medicines sa mga tao, especially doon sa mga marginalized na kababayan po natin. Sa pamamagitan po ng Lab for All, PhilHealth is able to drum up the interest of members and would-be providers sa atin pong programa. So umiikot po yung Lab for All at kasama po ang PhilHealth dyan para po lalong mailapit ang serbisyo ito sa atin pong mga kababayan. Next slide. So, namamalagi po ang PhilHealth. We remain in high spirits and in high hopes for this new era of reforms in the Philippine health sector. And we remain committed to our role as one of the lead implementers of the universal health care. So, PhilHealth will stay true to its mandates as the country's social health insurer with high regard for transparency, efficiency, and accountability para po yan sa kapakanan ng milyon-milyon po nating mga kababayan na ating pong miyembro ng PhilHealth. So wherever they may, they may be, saan man sila, o kailan man nila kailanganin yung mga serbisyong medikal, ang PhilHealth po ay naririto para po sa kanilang kapakanan. Maraming maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat din po, PhilHealth Acting Vice President of Corporate Affairs Group, Sir Ray Ballena. Yan. So we now move 
forward to a government-owned and controlled corporation that provides insurance protection to farmers affected by natural calamities, lalong-lalo na po ngayon, ano, sunod-sunod yung super typhoons dito sa atin. So included din po sa insurance protection yung mga crop disease and infestations. So in 2020 alone, some 3.09 million farmers and fisher folk have already enrolled in the insurance programs of the Philippine Crop Insurance Corporation or the PCIC. Our next speaker is the current head and CEO of the PCIC. Born in Bacolod City in Negros Occidental, PCIC President J.B. Jovici Bernabe studied elementary and high school in Lasal, Bacolod. He graduated with distinction in both levels. He finished business economics in 1991 and then law in 1996, both at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Prior to becoming president of PCIC, Attorney Bernabe has had a long experience in dealing with the workings of the nation's agriculture sector. From 1999 to 2000, he served as the Deputy Executive Director of the National Agricultural and Fishery Council, or NAFSI, an attached agency of the Department of Agriculture. For exemplary performance, he headed that same agency from the year 2000 to 2001 and from 2003 to 2004 as its Executive Director. Attorney Bernabe also served as board secretary of the Sugar Regulatory Administration from 1998 to 2001. In 2008, he was appointed to the PCIC. During this time, Attorney Bernabe has put the PCIC and crop insurance in the mainstream discourse on agriculture and fisheries development. Today, the agency and the products and services it delivers are considered as key, even indispensable, ingredients in inclusive agriculture and fisheries development. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome PCIC Acting Head and CEO, J.B. Joby C. Bernabe. Thank you, Trixie and uh, Jasper. Good morning to everyone. Good morning to our uh, dynamic per, uh, chair of uh, GCG, Justice uh, Alex Quiroz, my uh, good friend, Commissioner Gideon Jed Mortel. Morning. And, uh, all, morning. And good morning to all our friends from SSS, GSIS, and PhilHealth. This will be a very short, we uh, just have five slides presentation. Okay, we can, uh, as a short background, PCIC is a GOCC mandated to provide insurance protection to our agricultural producers, especially small farmers and fisher folk. Uh, we are currently under the supervision of the Department of Finance. We have started our operations in 1981. Next. Currently, we, our insurance program consists of seven products. The rice, corn, and high-value crop insurance offer farmers protection for their investments in standing crops. Livestock insurance for their livestock uh, and poultry. Fisheries for fish stocks and other aquaculture crops like seaweed and non-crop agricultural asset insurance for support assets used in the farms. Our seventh product is uh, credit and life term insurance. It's uh, sort of a micro insurance that covers loss of life and limb and offers loan repayment protection to creditors among farmers, fisher folk and family members and allied agricultural and fishery workers. The first six products rice, corn, high value crop, fisheries, livestock, and non-crop agri-asset are being provided to our small farmers free of charge. And uh, the premium is being subsidized by the national government every year. Our products provide protection against natural calamities, pest infestation, and diseases. Our insurance, next please, service, Give several benefits, protects farm investments, an assured farmer or fisherman gets paid back in the event of loss of assets, including standing crops, fish stocks, and animals. Crop insurance, likewise, eases up credit flow. It is a substitute collateral that gives farmers and fisher folk eligibility to borrow and lending institutions the confidence to provide credit. Payment of indemnity following a natural calamity or any insured peril provides farmers and fisher folk with quick means to restart operations. 
thus mitigating disruption in farm operations and by extension in the economic life of a locality or the nation. These benefits make agricultural insurance an effective financial adaptation measure to the impacts of extreme weather due to climate change. Next, please. Uh, this was mentioned uh, a while ago by our uh, MC. I will not anymore uh, repeat what was said uh, a while ago. Uh, I just want to mention that uh, PCIC has gained top billing among GOCCs in the past six years from 2016 to 2021. We have gained likewise high marks in a customer satisfaction survey, averaging 91.57%, indicating the ratio of clients interviewed find PCIC's service satisfactory or better over the uh, last six or seven years. Next, please. Future of agricultural insurance. PCIC will continue to broaden insurance coverage through three strategies. First, we will pursue digitalization further toward using smartphones and tablets for georeferencing farms and paying, and paying indemnity through bank cards, among others. Second, we will forge more partnerships with non-government profit and non-profit sector and even private insurance companies toward innovating insurance products. And third and last strategy is we will open up insurance business to private firms. We will teach them, we will give them technical assistance so that they will learn the nuances of crop insurance. And uh, having fostered knowledge of the agricultural insurance business through the through uh, partnership with private insurance corporations, we hope to entice these corporations to engage in agricultural insurance here in the Philippines. So that's all. Uh, good morning to everyone. Thank you very much, Attorney Jovi Bernabe. Long time no see, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and then we now have come to the most awaited part of our webinar, the raffle. The <laughs> biro lang po. Uh, it's now the Q&A portion of our webinar. So... Uh, we would like to remind our viewers to send in their questions sa ating chat box with our hashtag, GC, uh, hashtag GCG Positive Change. Uh, with the indulgence of my co-host, I will ask the first question addressed to the GCG, to uh, either to Justice Quiroz or Attorney Martel. Sir, uh, you mentioned earlier this year that you want to amend the charter of GCG uh, can we get the updates about this and what's our timeline for the amendment of the GCG charter itself? Comortel, would you like to discuss it? Along, uh, pakiulit nga nung talong at uh, na, yeah, please. <clears throat> Sige, sir. Uh, sir, nabangit uh, po ng GCG earlier this year that uh, it wants to amend its charter and it's been talking with the house leadership. We just want to ask some updates. Kamusta po ba itong plano, sir? And what is the timeline para maamendahan po yung ating... Yes, uh, that's very true, no? Uh, uh, in fact, uh, three weeks ago, uh, we have had communication with uh, the uh, chairman of the committee on government corporation, Congressman Olivares, no? And we have actually uh, finalized our uh, submissions pertaining to the legislative agenda of the GCG. Ang pinapalakas po natin dito ay ang uh, number one, uh, gusto po nating madagdagan ang kapangyarihan ng uh, GCG para po lalong mabantayan ang tinatawag na 10 trillion assets and resources ng GCG. Alam niyo po naman na napakahalaga ng ating ma mga resources na ito at ito po ay kailanman hindi pwedeng uh, mapupunta lamang sa walang uh, kapakanang paggasta ng mga GOCC. At uh, Ang mga um, amyenda o legislation na gusto namin matagdag, number one, gusto po namin magkaroon ng tinatawag na subpina power no? para po uh, ito ay maging epektibong pamamaraan ng GCG para mapatawag agad ang mga 
GOCCs. Na po. Number two, uh, yung pong aming tinatag na anti-corruption and integrity program, ito po ay amin din pong pinalalakas. At sa pamamagitan po ng pagpapalawak ng mandato ng ating um, GCG, ito po ay kaagad matutugunan. Number three, pag kung inyo pong makikita, kinumpirma pa po, kinumpirma na po ng ating kataas-taasang hukuman yung tinatawag na power ng GCG to merge, yung power ng GCG to streamline, yung power ng GCG to um, um, uh, abolish. Okay? Para po yung mga GOCC na hindi po nagpe-perform ay atin na pong ma-abolish. Uh, sa kasulukuyan po, inyo pong makikita, para po sa amen, uh, amendment na yan, ay meron na po tayong 31 na GOCCs na na-abolish. Subalit kailangan po lang mapaganda lalo ang mandato upang mapabilis po ang tinatag na liquidation process. Yung po ang ilang mga um, amendment na gusto po namin ipasok sa mandato po ng GCG. Uh, Commissioner Martel, ito po bang amend amendments ito ay aasa inaasahan nating matapos within the year or next year po ba ito mangyayari? Ano ba nakita natin timetable dito, sir? <laughs> uh, sana po, sana po. Kasi po, uh, uh, para po ito mapabilis, ang ginagawa po namin ay pagkilos ng sabay. Binigyan po namin ng kopya ang uh, House of Representatives at ganun din naman po, nag, uh, sa nagsabi na rin po kami sa Senado ng aming mga legislative agenda po ito. So we are, uh, we will be providing also a uh, Senator Cayetano of the copy of our legislative agenda para po sabay agad na bigyan tugon ang tinatawag naming mga amendments dito sa aming uh, mandato ng GCG. So, Comerte, na-mention po kanina yung mga possible regarding abolition. So, may update po ba tayo sa number of GOCCs na na-okay na po for abolition or privatization in light of its continuous review of the charters and performances po ng mga GOCCs? Opo, uh, nagpalabas din po kami ng tinatag na press release that uh, we are continually uh, examining the charters of the uh, GOCCs na kung saan ay gusto po namin makapagsabit sino ba ang GOCC number one na wag nang i-renew yung kanilang terms of uh, uh, existence. Number two, sino ba yung GOCC na dapat kaagad ay ma-abolish. Number three, sa kasalukuyan po meron po tayong 31 abolished GOCCs in the process of liquidation. At ito po ng aming pong mapag-aralan ang kanilang pong mga natitirang mga resources, pwede po tayo makakalap ng tinatawag na 22 to 25 billion okay, na resources. Kaya po minamadali po namin ito sapagkat habang tumatagal ang panahon, baka po ito ay maubos ng walang nangyayaring magandang pupuntahan. Ang iba pong GOCCs dito ay na-abolish pa po as early as 2013. Kaya naman po sa, sa pamumuno ng aming Chairman Justice Alex Quiroz, eh kanya po kaagad inactivate yung tinatawag naming uh, damo, yung po ang aming uh, opisina na in charge sa liquidation process. At ngayon nga po nagpo-propose ko kami ng executive order na isasubmit po namin sa Office of the President para po mapabilis ang paglilikom ng natitirang resources na abot po sa 22 to 25 billion pesos po. Ayan. Bago po tayo dumako sa ibang mga representative ng ating GOCCs at dumadami na po yung mga katanungan sa ating Facebook comments, uh, nice lang po basahin itong isang tanong mula sa ating mga friends also from the media. Uh, lastly, para pa rin po ito sa GCG, uh, Justice Gross or Comortel, uh, hingi lang po sana kami ng update regarding sa inyong ongoing study on re reviewing the pagcor decoupling rules uh, lalo na po ngayon na nagsabi ang pagcor na may plano itong gumawa at magtak magpatakbo ng sarili nitong online casino starting next year paano din po ito makakaapekto doon sa study na ginagawa ng GCG sa pagdedecouple ng pagcor rules salamat po Comortel okay uh, tungkol naman po dito sa issue ng pagcor Talaga mong pong uh, ongoing concern po yan, tinatawag na issue ng privatization. Ano po? Kasama po yan sa tinatawag na mandato ng GCG, ang tinatawag na decoupling. Ano po? Ito po yung paghihiwalay ng mandato ng isang GOCC kung ito po ay nag, uh, 
a-undertake ng dalawang responsibilidad, yung tinatawag po na uh, regulatory at saka po commercial. No? Kung makikita po ninyo sa ibang um, uh, jurisdiction uh, sa Indonesia, Malaysia, at sa kahit saan po mga rehiyon, po, yung pong tinatawag na paghihiwalay ng, ng mandato ay isang uh, ginagawa ng tinatawag na uh, direksyon ng katulad po natin na uh, state-owned enterprise. Ano po. Uh, sa parte po ng GCG, patuloy po ang pag-aaral tungkol po dyan. In fact, aming pong pinagsasabit ng position paper ang mga taga-pagkor, ano po, yung pong kanilang union, yung pong kanilang management, and even the policy directions of the board. No? Uh, ang GCG po, anuman po ang maging desisyon niyan, kami po ay sumusulod sa tinatag naming memorandum circular na kung saan ay meron po kaming batayan kung dapat nga bang i-implement ang tinatag na number one, decoupling, number two, of private decision. Hindi po kami magkakaroon ng anumang desisyon na base lamang sa tinatag na whim and caprices. Ito po ay mangyayari na uukol sa mga batay na kaset sa aming tinatawag ng memorandum circula. And maraming salamat po, Comerter. Meron din pong nagtanong sa FB, isho-show po natin sa screen, from Miss Mary Grace, what program does SSS have for its members so they can have a bigger pension when they retire? Sir Ray. Sir hmm. Fern. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Miss Tricksy, I think uh, that's for Fernand, sorry po. Okay. <laughs> for Fernand. Akala ko mayroon ng SSS ang pili. <laughs> okay, so ganito po. Uh, alam po natin na, na maraming ang uh, tumatanggap ng SSS pension na hindi sumasapat doon sa kanilang pangangailangan. So, uh, minabuti po ng SSS and as provided na rin po doon, doon sa ating Social Security Act of 2018 or yung Republic Act 199, may um, natin po doon magtayo tayo ng Provident Fund for Members na ang tawag po natin ngayon ay WISP at WISP Plus. So ang WISP po ay para sa mga nagtatrabaho sa sa private sector na kung saan sumesweldo na mas mahigit sa 20,000. So meron pong uh, uh, contribution na hinuhulog ang employer at employee para doon sa WISP at kung ikaw naman ay uh, voluntary member or self-employed na mas mababa sa 20,000 ng inyong kita uh, mayroon po tayong tinatawag na WISP Plus. So, basically, it's a provident fund na pandagdag po para doon sa retirement fund. So, halimbawa po, uh, pagdating ng 60 years old, uh, mayroon ko yung tinanggap na 15,000 from the regular fund. Tapos may additional na naipong kayong 1 million doon sa inyong uh, WISP at saka WISP Plus account. Yan po ay tatanggapin ninyo in the form of pension. So, bali dalawa pong pension ang tatanggapin natin sa SSS. Isang regular, doon sa regular program, at saka po doon sa Provident Fund. So, magkakatulong po. Halimbawa, may 15,000 kayo doon sa regular program at may 15,000 kayo doon sa sa ating WISP at WISP Plus, aabot po iyan ng 30,000. So, yan po ngayon yung uh, ginagawa ng SSS upang mapalaki pa ang uh, tatanggapin niya retirement pension ng ating mga miyembro. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat din po, Sir Fernand. Ito naman po, dumako lang po tayo sa PhilHealth. Katanungan mula sa ating Facebook pay, uh, live stream from Ms. Kerry Dre. For PhilHealth po, paano po mag-apply ng package for family plan insurance? Maraming salamat po, Sir Ray. Wala pa po si Sir Ray. Uh, babalik ka po natin mga katanungan ito na para sa PhilHealth. Dumako po mo tayo ngayon sa GSIS. Okay. So, what do you think? Hello? Uh, ah, ayun na po pala. Ayun na po. Sir Ray. Sir Ray? Ayan. Ayan. Sir Ray. Yes, oh, sorry ah, medyo nagkaka-problema internet issue. Pero pwedeng pakiulit po yung tanong. Sige po, ito po sir. Galing po kay Miss Kerry Dre sa ating Facebook live stream para po sa PLL, paano po mag-apply ng package for family plan insurance? Ito. Sorry. Sorry. Okay po, marami po sa inyong katan uh, maraming salamat po sa inyong katanungan. 
alam nyo po, gaya ng nabanggit ko kanina, ayon sa universal healthcare law, tayo pong lahat ng mga Pilipino ay automatic members ng uh, PhilHealth. So maganda po na tanong nyo kung paano po kayo magpaparehistro sa programa. Uh, tayo pong lahat bilang members dapat ay registered. So magmula po sa tatay, sa nanay, at yung mga anak naman po natin, mabilo 21 years of age, sila po ay pwedeng i-declare as dependent. Ngayon, kung yung head of the family lamang ang magre-rehistro, ay dapat i-declare po as dependents yung kanya pong legal na asawa at yung kanyang mga anak below 21 years of age. No? Pero kasama na po dyan, yun pong uh, adopted, yung legitimated, no? Pat pati na po yung illegitimate, kasama na rin po yung foster children. Ngayon, uh, dapat lamang po ay manatili na updated yung atin pong registration no? sa PhilHealth. Kung sa gayon, maging, maging hawa yung pag-a-avail po natin ng ating benefits. Thank you so much po, sir. May isa pa pong question. Tinatanong po nung mga young workforce natin, kamusta na po yung mental health package benefits? Ano po yung additional details for this and kailan po ito expected? Well, ngayong taon po natin inaasahan na iro-roll out po yung ating outpatient mental health package. Ano po? And I am not at liberty to uh, divulge no, yung pong detalye ng ating pong benefit package. At uh, yan po ay... Uh, ipepresent natin sa ating PhilHealth Board at ilalabas po natin yung complete guidelines po niyan, yung kompletong detalye ng uh, pakete sa pamamagitan po ng isang PhilHealth Circular na yan po ilalabas po natin ngayong taon din po. So makakaasa po kayo na ito ay uh, uh, magiging subject ng ating information dissemination para malaman po ng marami nating mga kababayan. Maraming salamat, Sir Ray. At ngayon ay dadako tayo sa GSIS kay Attorney Tain. So ito, kayo ang isa sa mga talagang on the spot agent kay GOCC sa so state pension ngayon. Uh, sir, may tanong din tayo from our friends from the media again. Ito po ay tungkol sa progress po ng actuarial study na ng GSIS sa MUP, sa ating pension ng military and uniform personnel. Uh, may update sa po ba tayo tungkol rito dahil sabi po ni Secretary Jokno two weeks ago na malapit at itong matapos or expected na itong matapos ng GSIS within the few, few weeks. Okay sir, actually po uh, kasama pa rin yun sa pinag-aaralan kasi hindi pa nga din naman po uh, na-finalize yung, yung mga uh, magiging terms and conditions po uh, at provisions ng magiging final na batas. Uh, pero one thing is for sure po, ang, ang gusto, ang ni-request po ng GSIS is that uh, yung para sa MUP po ay uh, magiging hiwalay po ang pondo niya from the regular na social insurance fund for all the members. Specifically because uh, right now naman, uh, iba pa yung terms and conditions ng pagiging pen, uh, rit, na, for uh, different ang terms ng benefits ng retirement at pension for the MUP. So, Right now, uh, what is for sure lang is that we will have a separate accounting for the fund. So we have a social insurance fund uh, for all existing members of the GSIS. And if and whenever uh, mag, mag fall under sa GSIS coverage, yung MUP ay uh, gagawan siya ng isang separate fund para po uh, uh, wala pong uh, intermarriage ng pondo po ng dalawa. Sir, kailan po kaya natin inaasahan yung updated na actuarial study? Is the huli, sir, ng 2019 pa about the MUP? Oh, right now po, I'm not uh, actually familiar pa kung uh, uh, ano yung timeline ng aming actuarial department, but I can I can ask them later and get back to you with with, with that info. Pa. And another question po, Attorney Jason. So how much remains on GI... GSIS existing investment pool and what other invents investments are there in the pipeline? Okay, po. well, actually, uh, we're talking about about uh, two, three two trillion na uh, in the uh, of uh, funds po or uh, assets po for for the GSIS. Uh, this is uh, separated po uh, based on a uh, an, an allocation. No, may, may allocation of funds yan. Merong para sa loans to members, merong for fixed income, meron din kaming uh, ini-invest sa mga uh, sa equities, then private equities, 
no so and of course real, real estate and infrastructure so meron po kaming tinatawag na asset allocation which is actually very fluid naman po we, we as i said kanina po uh, we, we are we, we we pride ourselves in being on top of the market situation so what happens is that uh, tinitingnan po ng GSIS kung san yung mga uh, which particular assets are high, higher yielding uh, at the moment and then we adjust our asset allocation to to fit the bill of course subject to uh, risk considerations then so like uh, in the past few months uh, we had very high interest so we made sure na to fix uh, a lot of our long term funds on higher yielding uh, bonds while the rates were high so that now na bumababa na yung rates eh, hindi na kami mamumblema so uh, i am not at liberty really to divulge kung ano ano yung mga i-invest namin but uh, definitely po we are looking into the major sectors po that are of need sa, sa Pilipinas ngayon especially for nation building and on the top of the list siguro I would say it's uh, power pero other than that we are looking at many different uh, investments po uh, considering the size of the investment fund of the GSIS which is going into the trillions uh, we cannot really just just rely on one one kind of asset so we have a very a very diverse uh, portfolio for investment maraming maraming sa po attorney Peng at ngayon uh, may mga tanong tayo para sa PCAC kay attorney Jovi Bernabe sir yung una pong katanungan dito ay kamusta po yung bilang po the number of covered farmers ng PCIC last year and ano po ba yung target natin na ma-cover ng PCIC this year? Well, uh, last year maabot tayo ng may get uh, 3.8 million farmers na na-cover natin just for one year, no? And it's the largest uh, coverage uh, in the history of PCIC. This year, I'm uh, pretty confident abutin na natin yung 4 million farmers na ma-enroll natin. So uh, that's a good penetration rate uh, for for a crop insurance in any part of this world no na a crop insurance company that can at least cover around 40% of our farmers. So ano yung mga rason po ba na bakit tumataas itong coverage? Well, tumataas number 1 it's because of the support of the government kasi yung coverage natin libre no like uh, field health libre itong crop insurance libre rin to walang binabayaran yung mga farmers natin dito as long as they are registered in the registry system of the Department of Agriculture and they are uh, small farmers they are given free crop insurance by the government kaya if the budget is bigger the coverage is bigger also so it's really a function of the budget that's being given to us yeah salamat po Attorney Bernabe, may isa pa pong tanong. Yung comments po on the proposal of the Department of Agriculture to retake the PCIC under its wings. Well, uh, I think there's already a decision on that uh, with GCG. Na, uh, right now, we will be uh, maintaining the status quo. In other words, we'll still uh, be under the Department of Finance. Uh, can, uh, yeah. Thank you po, Attorney Bernabe, and perhaps can we get additional insights po from GCG about that, yung retaking o yung status ko po for the uh, PCIC under the DRF? Justice, may I? Uh, we confirm, no? Uh, based on our last uh, meeting where uh, PCIC is also present, the uh, uh, DBM, PMS, DOF, and even the DA, uh, the discussion is really for the uh, PCIC to be to remain under the wing of the DOF. So uh, we confirm that um, manifestation of Attorney JP. Get a brief explanation why? Uh, is it possible, sir, to get a brief exp explanation why status quo? Uh, Attorney JP. <laughs> well, uh, we're doing well. Whether under the Department of Agriculture or under the Department of Finance, no, we are we are hitting our target. But right now, we are focusing also on improving our uh, financial uh, operations, and we are getting a lot of good inputs from our financial uh, economic managers. 
while we are under the Department of Agriculture. So we have to make sure that uh, the the financial uh, status and standing of PCIC remains uh, robust. And uh, being under the Department of Finance really uh, is uh, is helpful for to PCIC. Thank you, Attorney JB. May mga katanungan to po rito mula sa Facebook. Nababasahin po ni Trixie. And if a flash po niya. And from Mr. Dennis Guevara, for PhilHealth po, in case mag-stop ng PhilHealth contribution ang member, pwede pa ba siyang mag-avail ng PhilHealth benefits? Kasi laging tinatanong ng hospital kung updated ang contribution ni member. Yes, Sir Dennis, no? uh, yung pong pagtatanong ng hospital ay malaking tulong po yan sa PhilHealth at sa ating lahat to make sure na regular at uh, uh, panayan po yung ating pagkocontribute sa programa sapagkat mahalaga po ang ating mga contribution sa programa para mapanatili po yung ating mga benefits, no? hindi lang po ngayon kundi sa pangmatagalan. Ngayon po, ayon sa Universal Healthcare Law, Sir Dennis, ay makakagamit po tayo ng ating benepisyo kahit na may kakulangan man tayo no, sa ibinayaran na contribution. Yan po ay garantiya ng batas at dapat po yan ay i-observe no, sa mga ospital. Uh, kung meron man po ng mga uh, months, no, uh, period na hindi po nabayaran sa PhilHealth, ay ito naman ay dapat babayaran pa rin ng miyembro pagkatapos nila na ma-avail yung benepisyo. Sabi nga natin, mahalaga na mabayaran natin ito nang sa gayon ay maging sustainable po ang ating programa, Sir Dennis. Lamang ayon sa batas, kapag ka tayo po ay magbabayad na nung mga arrears natin, ano, nung mga nakaraan ng na mga contributions, ay subject na rin po ito no, sa interest. Uh, kaya maganda po na huwag na nating hintayin yon Dapat ay regular yung ating pagbabayad nang sa gayon, pagka gagamit na tayo ng benefits, ay uh, walang hassel no sa paggamit uh, pag avail ng benepisyo. And thank you so much po Sir Ray. So one more question po. This time po it's for SSS. It's from Miss Psyche Mendoza. It has been reported that the Social Security System or SSS is targeting to provide at least half of the Filipino population with social protection during the term of the Marcos administration. How do you intend to achieve this, Sir Fernand? Okay. So number one is uh, we need to increase our coverage. Uh, dapat po lahat ng mga working Filipinos uh, in the private sector should be covered by SSS. We have already intensified our uh, program for this. Uh, we, we, we relaunched the Kasanga program wherein uh, lahat po ng mga job order uh, workers, contra contract of service workers, in the government na not yet covered by the SSS ay kinocover po namin. We have also uh, introduced, uh, re relaunched actually yung coverage natin sa informal sector. So mayroon po tayong mga ginagawang e-wheels, uh, yung binagid po kangina, na kung saan ay uh, ang objective nito is uh, ma-reach natin yung mga far-flung areas, yung mga organized group, or working in the in, uh, uh, underground economy para mabigyan nga sila ng social security protection. Ang uh, ginawa po ng SSS uh, after the coverage, uh, sinimplify po namin kung paano magbayad ng SSS contribution. Uh, marami po tayong mga online payment partners na kung saan ang miyembro ay hindi na kailangan pumunta sa, sa, sa branch offices upang magbayad ng contribution. Ang gagawin lamang po nila ay mag-access doon sa kanilang my.sss account at pwede na silang magbayad. And also, yung ating uh, online facility, ginawa po natin yan upang uh, lahat ng miyembro ay maka-access anytime, anywhere, 24 by 7, uh, sa kanilang account. Sa, sa my.sss po kasi, uh, pwede nating uh, mag-inquire, mag-verify, and pwede nating mag-submit ng mga application forms uh, doon sa, sa ng mga beneficyo. Tandaan po natin, pitong beneficyo ang ino-offer ng SSS ngayon. Meron po tayong uh, sickness, meron tayong maternity, meron tayong uh, disability, retirement, funeral debt, and ang recently launched nga po natin ay yung tinatawag nating unemployment benefit. Lahat po na to ay ma-access online and also uh, babayaran din po natin yan online. So mas madali po yung ating mga proseso at pagbabayad ng mga beneficyo. Yan po yung mga initiatives na ginagawa natin 
upang mapaiting natin yung coverage and benefit payments. We have also launched yung ating uh, uh, tinatawag na uh, raise, yung run after contribution evaders na kung saan hinahabol po natin yung mga delinquenting employers upang yung mga empleyado hindi na ipapagbayad ay ma-remit ang kanilang contribution at mag-qualify sa mga SSS benefits na na siyempre, yun po yung ultimate goal ng SSS, mapigyan ng protection yung ating mga manggagawa at kanilang tagapagman na sa, dito nga po sa, uh, sa private sector. Maraming Thank salamat, you. Sir Ferdinand. Maraming salamat, Sir Ferdinand. At may point of manhin sa aming mga viewers na meron pa mga katanungan dahil hindi na tayo pinahilutulutan ng ating oras. Uh, at this juncture, I would like, we would like to ask our speakers to deliver their final messages. Ngayon po, babalik na naman. We start with uh, Attorney JB of the PCIC for his final message. Yeah, thank you uh, to Philippines Graphic for having us here. Um, we learned a lot. I hope our audience has learned a lot from, from today's uh, uh, forum uh, involving four important uh, GOCCs in the government. And thank you also for, to GCG uh, Chairman uh, Alex Quiroz and Commissioner Jed Mortel for for inviting us in this uh, forum. Ray? Philippines Graphic, maraming salamat din po uh, sa GCG, kay Chairman Quiroz. At nagpapasalamat po kami sa lahat ng mga kababayan natin at partners sa pagsuporta po sa ating PhilHealth program. So ang pilad po ay kaisa ng ating Pangulo sa pagkakaloob at sa pagsasakatuparan ng universal health care para sa lahat ng Pilipino. Tungo po sa bagong Pilipinas. Salamat po. Salamat Sir Ray. Uh, Attorney Peng. Okay po. Uh, again, maraming salamat sa Philippines Graphic and uh, maraming salamat of course sa GCG kay Chairman Justice Quiroz at kay Commissioner uh, Mortel. Uh, I just like to state na ang GSIS po remains to be fully committed to its, to its tagline na ginhawa for all. So we want our, our members to have uh, that uh, ultimate na customer experience whenever they transact with the GSIS. So if ever there is anything at all na uh, mayroong suggestions, ang mga members namin, the, the GSIS always has its door open for uh, suggestions and uh, may a positive or constructive criticism as we are always uh, trying to move forward and improve for the sake of uh, uh, and welfare of our members. Salamat po. Salamat po, Attorney Tang. Sir Fernand? Uh, nagpapasalamat po kami sa GCG for inviting us and also sa Philippine Graphics. Matagal na tayong pag-partner sa pagbibigay ng servisyo sa ating mga miyembro. Maraming maraming salamat po. At sa ating mga miyembro, uh, ini-encourage po namin kayo na mag-enroll sa ating my.sss yung pong inyong mga savings account, yung inyong yeah, mga disbursement that. account. Enroll po natin sa ating DAEM upang kapag uh, nag-file po kayo ng ating mga benefit claims o loan proceeds, madali po namin kayong mababayasan. Tandaan nyo po, uh, isang text lang po sa SSS, nandito kami upang mabigyan kayo ng servisyo. Salamat po, Sir Fernand. Commissioner Mortel, Uh, uulahin ko po ang uh, pagsasabi uh, ng salamat sa ating Philippine Graphics. Uh, salamat in collaborating with the GCG ano po, sa isang napakagandang uh, at produktibong uh, uh, webinar na ating ginagawa ngayon. At syempre po, isusunod ko po ang ating dalawang uh, tagapamagitan, si Jasper at saka po si Trixie. Kung wala po sila, eh baka po magkanya-kanya tayo ng uh, pagsasalita. Okay? Susunod ko po yung ating apat na GOCCs na pillars po ng aming Social Security and Financial Institution. Simula po kay BP Fernand Nicolas ng SSS, kay EBP Attorney Jason Tang ng GSIS, kay BP Ray T. Balenya ng PhilHealth, at syempre po sa kaibigan kong si Attorney JB ng uh, PC. Uh, I see, ano po, si Atoli Joe, Joe B. Bernabe, no? Sa SSS po, ang uh, mga nanonood po at nakikinig ay muli nila naramdaman ang social services na binibigay ng ating pamahalaan katulad po ng SSS e-wheels at ang ating pong ginahawa for all for DSIS ang ating pong tinatag na UHC Act Consulta uh, uh, Love for All ng PhilHealth at ang protection po ng mga magsasaka ng PCIC 
Ito pong lahat pong ito ay pinararamdam ng ating pamalaan sa pamagitan po ng digitalization at iba pang programa ng ating mga GOCCs. Uh, sama-sama po tayo sa pagtalima, uh, sa pagsunod at pakikiisa sa direksyon ng ating pamalaan. Sabi nga po natin, sulong bagong Pilipinas. Salamat po. Salamat po, Commissioner Mortel. At syempre po, last but not the least, ating kapitapitagang chairperson, Justice Quiroz. Yes. Uh, sa Philippine Graphic, as well as yung dalawang uh, magigiting na host natin ngayong umaga, maraming maraming salamat. As well as dito naman sa apat na GOCC, uh, maraming salamat sa inyong uh, walang kapantay na pagpapahayag ng ating public service. Ang GCG at GOCC ay palaging magkahawak kamay upang magbigay ng serbisyo sa ating publiko. At uh, ngayon, alam kong kinapos tayo ng oras o panahon. Pwede po niyong ipadala yung ibang concern ninyo sa mga GOCC Okay. na kung kinakailangan namin i-forward sa kanila para mabigyan kayo ng karapan uh, ng sagot sa inyong mga katanungan, eh, gagawin po natin. Ang aming tanggapan po ay nag, uh, naka-open policy kami. Uh, 7.30 to in the morning up to 7.30 in the evening. We always uh, welcome uh, any communication through Uh, online. Now, if you wish to have a face-to-face -face talk with the GCG, uh, 7.30 to 5.30, ang tanggapan po naman namin ay bukas upang makinig si inyong uh, inaing kung ano man ang inyong pangangailangan. Magmula sa mga empleyado ng mga GOCC, sa publiko na higit na pinagsisirbisyohan namin. You are always welcome pumunta po kayo sa aming tanggapan. Itong programang ito ay napakagandang serbisyo ng informative. Paalam natin sa publiko ang uh, serbisyong available para sa kanila. Ito po ang pinag-uutos ng ating mahal na Pangulo. Noong nakaraang SONA, wala siyang kinadihindihin kung hindi. Pagserbisyohan natin ng mabuti ang publiko. Sa ngayon, sinasabi ko in behalf of uh, GCG as well as GOCC, ang, ang pag-uutos ng ating Pangulo ay susundin po namin. Kung kaya kami ay always no, open to listen, to receive. Not only that, we will react accordingly kung ano ang dapat namin ibigay na karapat dapat na kasagutan sa inyong pangangailangan. Mabuhay po ang Pilipinas. Maraming maraming salamat po. God bless po sa atin lahat. Maraming salamat po Justice Quiroz, Trixie. And muli, nagpapasalamat po kami sa mga guest speakers natin. GCG Chair Justice Alex Quiroz, GCG Commissioner Gideon Martel, SSS VP of NCR North Division, Vernon Nicolas, GSIS AEVP Attorney Jason Teng, PhilHealth Acting Vice President for Corporate Affairs Group, Sir Ray Balena, Balena and PCIC Acting Head and CEO, Sir JB Jovi Bernabe. Maraming maraming salamat pong mali sa inyong lahat. Stay tuned for the third GCG webinar coming your way in okay, August. Everyone. Maraming salamat po sa inyo. Salamat din po. And po Start Para po sa mga viewers natin. Ayan, for our viewers, please stand by as we announce the winners of the giveaway. Again, yung uh, giveaway po natin are three Taal Vista Overnight Stay in a premier room with breakfast buffet for two at veranda. So let's stand by po. So again, tatlo po yung ipapamigay natin na overnight stay. Overnight stay for two ba? Overnight stay for two. 
Yes. Ayan, sakto po at ngayon ay maulan. Yes. Ito yung overlooking view ng Taal. Taal. Wow. Ang sakto makita nila ako. Ito na. Yes. Ito magsisimula pa ang ating draw. Ito na. Ito na po. Wow! For our first winner is Miss Leia Kaling Bonotan. <laughs> Congratulations po. For our second winner... It's John J. Valdez. Congratulations po. Our second winner, John J. Valdez. And last but not the least, our third winner. Miss Hyde Stimawala. Thank you so much po. Sa ating mga viewers na tumutok po sa ating webinar ngayong umaga. Uh, and with that, uh, we bring to close our second Philippines Traffic BCC webinar. Sa mga nakamins po nung kung natin webinar, available po ang link to sa uh, Facebook page ng Philippines Traffic. And uh, our team will keep in touch sa ating mga giveaway winners. Again, uh, sa muli, ako po si Jasper Arcalas. At maraming salamat po sa pinig at panonood ng ating webinar ngayong araw. Ingat po tayong lahat at pagpalain na wala. Bye-bye po! Thank you po!